The spinal cord has a lot in common with the brain in terms of the organization. So remember, we talked at the beginning about how CSF is continuous between the brain and the spinal cord. And also, I mentioned that the meninges surround the spinal cord as well. The spinal cord is also made up of gray matter and white matter. So again, it follows a lot of the same patterns we've talked about already. But one of the interesting things is that the gray matter and the white matter in the spinal cord is reversed. So if, what I mean is that in the spinal cord, we typically see that the gray matter is deeper inside and the white matter is located more towards the periphery. You can see this really well when we look at it in cross section. But this makes sense if you think about the spinal cord's job. It's continuously having neurons leaving to go out to the tissues and having neurons come in to bring sensory information into the central nervous system. So that's the reason why the white matter is on the outside, because all of those neurons, all of those nerves, have to be myelinated in order to carry those signals over long distances. Now, one other note is that in the brain, we refer to the white matter as fibers, but in the spinal cord, we refer to the white matter axons as tracks when they're traveling out in the periphery. So in our next unit, which is on sensation, We'll be talking about some specific tracks that are involved in sending or receiving different types of information. Now, some of the other anatomy that's located here, we'll be talking a little bit more about when we're together in class. So we're gonna save that discussion of spinal anatomy for our time when we're together.